Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out the Alfa Romeo 4C Spider. So, you know, similar to the Alfa 4C which I tested, the hardtop, uh, but it only adds actually 22 pounds, so it's not really any much heavier. And actually one of the big benefits is you can see out the back pretty well, so you've added visibility to it. Probably one of the few uh, convertible versions of a car where the convertible actually has better visibility than the hardtop. So under the hood you've got the 1.7 liter turbocharged engine, 237 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, and you're hitting peak torque at just 2200 RPM, so you've got a lot of torque available at very low RPMs. Dual clutch transmission. So when did the uh, Spider go on sale in the US? The 4C Spider started selling this past month, so... Okay, so it just went on sale. Yep. First deliveries were over a week ago. Um, so we're excited to add that to our stable now, so we have to see that. Now what's the uh, starting price of the coupe versus the convertible? So the 4C coupe starts at 53900 and the 4C Spider is 10000 more. Okay. But in that, you're getting uh, obviously an open top car. Uh, sure. Standard leather. Oh, okay. So the leather option standard. Correct. So, you know, instead of optioning up on the coupe, which you would have to do, um, include it with the Spider. And then not only that, but the Spider brings in a bunch of new items, including uh, the Alpine radio that you see uh, before you. Oh, wow. Um, we have some new options, including a carbon fiber. Uh, yeah, that was, I think one of the complaints was that the, the audio system uh, on the coupe uh, but you've you've upgraded to an Alpine system. Is that this is far the Alpine system and the 4C Spider, which will also go into the 4C Coupe. Okay, uh, it's far easier to use. I mean, at the end of the day, let's just be honest. Most people want to hear the right, audio right, exactly track behind you. Yeah, exactly. On the bus, right? Yeah, you got a mid engine. It's right in your face. You've got the inlet right to the side of the passenger side. And does this have the uh, the muffler delete as well? This is the this has the racing performance exhaust. exhaust. Not the muffler. Symmetrical piping, which goes in place of where the muffler is, to get to all these you know, unique sounds that you hear, that signature alpha sound, if you will, with the high RPM range, which you okay. hear for uh, miles. Yeah. And what's just, you know, what sets this apart so much is the steering. Like the steering feel in this car is just so different than most things you experience. Without having that aid, you just feel everything. It's got a good weight to it. And, you know, it's just so precise. The turn in the second, the, the moment you turn the wheel, you know, you're actually turning. There's not a delay uh, at all. So it's just, it's a wonderful system. It's, uh, the steering on the 4C being a manual rack, you know, it's really the only car in the United States today that offers this setup. We're able to do it because of the car's unique and lightweight nature. Uh, not only does the car weigh 2,487 pounds, but nearly 60% of that weight is in the back, leaving the front axle extremely light, okay. extremely agile to do a manual yeah. steering rack. Even and at low speeds, you exactly. can still turn pretty easy. And to your point about the steering feel and the visceral experience that you get, you know, it's, it's amazing and awesome to feel the tires claw yep. or grip through the steering wheel because you don't, you lose that on a, even a regular uh, power steering car, let alone electronic power steering. So this car is really giving that sensation back to the driver. Yeah, the other thing that I noticed driving is the brake pedal feel is also very different from pretty much everything uh, I've experienced. I mean, the tiny, tiny amount of travel to it, and it's almost like it's pressure regulated, very similar to what you find in race cars sometimes where, you know, there's really not any give and you just, the amount of pressure you apply with your foot is uh, how you determine how much you want to brake. Our Alfa Romeo engineers are extremely proud of, of the brake pedal and the, the gas pedal we have floor mounted. Um, the brake pedal especially because they, they did a lot of research and spent a lot of time figuring out the amount of leverage and force that the foot can apply mm -hmm. you know, based on where the location of your heel is. At the same time, we wanted to make sure that it's a solid feel all the way through. And that, that feel only comes in about an inch and a quarter inch and a half at the most uh, pedal travel, which is, you know, compared to most cars, probably like a third of what you sure. see. And what's nice about it is it's linear all the way through. So okay. even that first little, little press, it's already gripping. I mean, it's- Yeah, no, it, it has a good bite to it. I mean, I think it's a, a bit more than most of the cars I've driven. And I don't know if there's a, a difference in the pad that you use, but no, it seems- No, it's, it's actually not even the pad. It's, it's fully understanding both the leverage uh, that your foot applies 
obviously our design of having it on the floor mm -hmm. and having a master cylinder, master brake cylinder that's been optimized for this setup and for uh, the calipers that we're using. Okay. So we even looked at using carbon ceramic on this car, but because it's so light, that additional weight didn't really give us any gain. Sure. Um, you know, this car can stop on uh, 60 miles an hour to zero and under 100 feet. Wow. You know, which is very impressive. Yeah. And again, you take out the mass, you know, you can do uh, some amazing things. Yeah, absolutely. I love the philosophy of removing weight. And it's cool to see all, like, the carbon fiber tub in here to actually be able to see it uh, rather than have it covered. Yeah, the, uh, the carbon fiber monocoque, we only build 12 a day. This wow. is hand-laid carbon fiber, Formula One style, unidirectional. So all the fibers are in the same direction, and we apply those layers uh, okay. as we need in the appropriate locations that have the most load, right? So if you don't okay. need as many layers, obviously, you don't right. need to bulk up as much in those areas. Um, obviously, that helps optimize for weight as well. Um, so 12 a day, you know, this is really the constraint that, you know, prohibits us from building more of this hand-built car. But again, it's, it's, it's truly an amazing feat. You know, it's 236 pounds, this tub, the whole structure of the car, 236. Yeah, that's crazy. And, uh, you know, we're looking at cars that are three, four hundred thousand dollars to get to this level of technology. Right, we're right, exactly. Three nine here in the Spider. Yeah, it's insane the price point at which you're getting this. You know, it has it has the carbon fiber monocoque. That's just it's wild that that's possible. So it's cool to see that. And you know, again, the carbon fiber monocoque being a true state of the art technology, something that's unheard of in a car under six figures. It offers a level of rigidity you won't find anywhere else. Right. And because of that, that's why our structural stiffness, torsional rigidity is so high that, well, we barely needed to do anything to do with Spider. It's already there. We didn't need to bulk right. up and yeah. add two, 300 pounds worth of reinforcement. Right. You yeah. already got the best architecture there is. That makes sense because it is it is only a slight amount of bit of uh, weight added for the spider. So is that just purely like the roof itself or is there a, a slight addition to the... Uh... I mean, there's a couple of different things and a lot of it could be design oriented. Obviously, we have a, a different rear design here with a yeah. deck lid instead yeah. of the glass uh, lid that you've seen on the coupe. Yeah. Um, there's some unique aluminum structure behind your head here um, that's unique to the spider. Okay. Uh, it's just a, it's actually a different contour than you find in the coupe. We went with the carbon fiber windshield surround. The coupe has a high strength steel. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, it looks yeah. awesome. So not only does it look good, it offers that cross car rigidity that you know you'd expect. Um, again, uh, you know we're only we're only adding where we need. You know, for us, we're only adding if it's adding for performance, right? right? Optimizing. This, this car is not you know in excess of anything. It's it's truly tailored down to what. A driver's car needs to be, and this car, obviously, as you know, being so light, is phenomenal on the track. Yeah, it's nice. Honestly, it's it's wonderful having this uh, the spider just being able to see behind you because it was it was a bit of a challenge with the uh, the coupe. Is there in the future are they looking at doing uh, a rear view camera, or is that it's it going to stay with the proximity sensors uh, as the option? You know, we're always looking at different things that we can do, uh, different improvements. Obviously, you know, bringing in the Alpine radios. Uh, example or the little pocket that we've added to oh, the left here. Yeah, so actually, now this wasn't the one that I... stick your phone. Yeah. Because otherwise it will bounce around the monocoque. Yep. Um, you know, we already have a TFT screen, so there's there's possibility here if we wanted to sure. do something um, to improve rear, rear view visibility. But at the you know, same time, you know, you should be passing everyone anyway. Right. <laughs> it's only for parking. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below.